Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Evan Better Presents. Uh, we're again on the test server. And if you remember correctly, the last video I showed you, I had some issues where how was I supposed to be able to get the depleted uranium cells out of the reactor without them, without the spaces being replaced by LZH condensators, right? Because the way the system's set up right now is it'll automatically pull out these LZH condensators whenever the damage value gets to around this point here. Uh, the reactor's turned off at the moment, as you can see over here. All right, so the problem I was having was the system worked beautifully for re uh, removing and repairing these LZH condensators, okay? So I did, had nothing, no issues with that. The problem came was what happens when a, a quad fuel uh, rod becomes a quad fuel depleted uranium rod? What do I do then? Because if I set the system up to extract these, it'll, it may or automatically place these instead. And the other issue is that if I set the system up to replace, uh, you know, these with these, it may accidentally put one of these in a spot for an LZH condensator when an LZH condensator gets pulled out. So I was trying to figure out how the hell can I set the system up so that there, it goes through a safe refueling cycle. And I came up with, I came up with a solution, with a genius solution. So we'll just go over here for a quick second. This here is an OR gate. All right, an OR gate operates very interestingly. It needs... No, you know what? I'm not even using the OR gate. What am I saying? I think this is an AND gate. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I was looking at AND gates, OR gates, uh, NAND gates, latch gates, all these things, because I, I, I knew there had to be a way to get the system to do what I wanted it to do. Here, I'm sorry. Let me get rid of this depleted, depleted uranium for a half second here. Does that count? No. There, let's get this radiation off the screen. So I was trying to figure out how the hell I can do this. So an AND gate is basically a series of redstone checks. All right, so it says, if I have a signal from this side, and this side, and this side, I will output a signal up here, which you can see right there. So I'm just going to give it some redstone, boom. So it's got signal from here, and here, and here, and it gives a signal up top. All right, so in this mode, which I'm just going to turn it back on, so in the control room, I would flick the switch to on. The reactor comes on, it's producing power. Right now, all three of our, our conditions are being met, so it's outputting power. All right? Say the reactor all of a sudden overheats. Boom, we'll, we'll just simulate that by reducing the heat value to zero. Okay, so say the reactor overheats. Boom, the reactor overheats. One of the, one of the values is not met on the AND gate, and it shuts off the output. So that, in turn, shuts off the reactor. All right? So it cools down, it goes back on. I want to do some uh, I want to turn off the uh, the reactor for a fueling cycle. Boom, I turn it off. The reactor goes power down. All right, refueling cycle is over. I turn it back on and that that I'll show you exactly how that works in a second. I'm so so freaking thrilled with the way I figured this out. So say I, I just want to get inside the reactor chamber itself and just take a look at the reactor and I want to turn the reactor off inside the chamber. Well, I flick this switch here. The system still shows it as being on, all right? So the remote sensor, which is connected to the main switch over there, is still in the on position. But I've overrode it being inside the reactor chamber with this master cutoff switch in the reactor chamber itself. So because now the AND gate doesn't have three, or it doesn't have all of its conditions met, it shuts off the reactor, as you can see right there, okay? Now here's where... So this is, this is right off the bat solved one of my problems of how the hell can I have it so that the thermal monitor and the switch can work at the same time? Well, this is how. So the thermal monitor overrides the switch, uh, that switch over there, in the event of a heat up or an overheat, okay? So if this triggers, it overrides my on switch. If I want to turn the reactor off from the control room, I click that switch, it turns off the reactor. I want to go inside the reactor chamber, I flick this switch, it turns off the reactor. You see, this is all beautiful. Normally, this would be left in on, the reactor is on. Okay, so now, how do I set up the system to automatically pull out depleted uranium cells and input um, fresh, fresh fuel? And how do I do that safely? Like the reactor needs to be in the off position when that happens, because otherwise it could overheat. An LZH condensator could be put in the wrong spot. A quad core uranium cell could be put in the wrong spot. So how do I set it up so that it does that for me? Well, this is where it came to me. So I need this to, to, to happen during a power off. So what do you do is you take, uh, let's just take out one of these, whoops. 
Um, we need to shut off the reactor for a second. Okay, so we'll take out... We'll take out one of these fuel rods. We'll take out a couple of them. So this simulates... What would happen... See that? It... <laughs> Actually, it shouldn't. Have, oh yes, it would. It would do that. Okay. Oh shit. Um. Oh, that's why. Okay. Sorry. It won't. It won't go through a fueling cycle unless I click that button over there. So let's just turn that back on. The reactor will be on. Let's actually turn this thing off for a refueling cycle. Okay. My mistake. So you can see only that switch will turn it into a refueling cycle. The main cutoff switch won't turn it into a refueling cycle, and this here, the thermal monitor, will not turn it into a refueling cycle. Only the main switch in the control room, which is basically going to be refueling and cycle switch, which happens instantaneously, so I don't even have to worry about it. So let's just get these out of here. So let's say the reactor goes and it burns through its cycle. All right. And now we've got a couple of depleted uraniums, because they're not all going to get depleted at the same time, obviously, right? That was weird. All right, so we've got a few quad fuel depleted uraniums in the system. Oh, shit. <laughs> this isn't going to be... Uh, not going to be able to... Okay, yeah, actually, this, w this will work. All right, so we've got a few quad uh, fuel cells that have been, become depleted, right? And we want to safely th remove those from the system. So I have here, let's look at the original ones, a fuzzy import bus, which will take them out at 25% when they become, uh, the LZDH con condensators become depleted, okay? So it pulls them out of the system, sends them through the repair system, and it puts them back into the reactor. And this is just the re-input down here, all right? So it's a precision export bus that puts perfect LZDH condensators back into the system. It's always running, except for when the system is off, okay? So now I have set over here, I have a precision import bus to remove quad fuel rods depleted uranium. Okay, so when the system depletes, I, uh, I'll, I'll notice that the power is going down. I can just turn the system off with that switch over there, which is connected to this wireless receiver. And automatically, this precision export bus will take a series of quad fuel rods in the system and pump them into the reactor in the right spot. Now, how do I make sure that it puts it in the right spot? This device right here. This is an inverter cell. Basically, what this does, uh, in conjunction with this ME dark cable, which you can see I have right here and right here. So under normal operating circumstances, uh, AE or IE, when the system is on, the signal gets sent. And you can see that right. Uh, yeah, you can see that right here. All right, so that shouldn't affect anything. All right, so the system is on. All right, I've noticed the power is going down, which means I have depleted uranium fuel cells in the, in the reactor. So I want to refuel the reactor safely. All right, so how do I refuel the reactor safely? Well, these dark ME cables, what they do is, when a, when a redstone signal is applied to them, they're active. As you can see here, it is now connected to the system. This one over here is no longer active because I don't, want the extraction of fuel rods portion of my AE network to be connected to the reactor. So how does this work? So when the signal is passing through it, it, uh, it keeps this one active, which is the, the cooling side, right? And when the signal is no longer active, as in I turn off this system, the signal inverts and now activates the, the um, fuel removing side of the AE network. Okay, and I have it disconnected at the moment because I don't want it doing this without me showing it to you. So let's turn this back on. And let's hook it back up to the AE network. All right, so now the fuel injecting side is now a part of the AE network again, except for this dark cable. Okay, so this dark cable separates it from the AE network. So everything's going fine. I want to do a fueling cycle. So I, I notice that my power output is down, 520, that's not right. I click the switch to off, turns off the reactor. At the same time, these two import, or this import bus and this export bus, look in the, syst look in the reactor, identify that there were quad depleted uranium cells in here, remember those ones here, pulls them out, 
replaces them with fresh quad fuel uranium cells from the system. And I simply click the system back on, 1040 output. 100% safe because the system is off. The reactor is basically off during a refueling cycle. And it is on for the rest of the time. And when it's on, I don't, when it's, when the reactor is regularly on, I don't want it to be trying to remove any of those fuel cells from the system because then it could accidentally pull an LZH condensator out or something like that. So as you can see here, I've now solved two of my major problems with, uh, well, Project Red integration, an AND gate and an inverter cell and some ME dark cable. That's all it is to it. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. It's poisoning me. All right. And this, uh, as you saw before, was my way of solving the issue where it was putting in too much lapis lazuli. Lazuli. Basically, I have logistics pipes, and this is just a logistics power junction, and a basic pipe, a supplier logistics pipe, and a provider logistics pipe, an ME interface, all connected up to my cyclic assembler. The cyclic assembler has the blueprint for the LZH condensators inside of it, and it will automatically keep the laz uh, lapis inside of this thing, only one stack worth, because I have it set on the provider pipe. Oops, I need a wrench. Keep one stack stocked at all times. All right. And that's how that works on this end. Now I just need to set up something that will automatically turn these depleted uh, quad uranium cells back into regular quad uranium cells. But as you can see, I've solved the other issues here. So thank you very much, guys. I hope this is helpful to you in your automation of your AE network. Uh, and your nuclear power plant integration. Okay, your comments, likes, favorites, subscribes, these are all very, very uh, sought after by me, and I hope to uh, get more input from you guys, especially about this setup here. I know there's got to be a more efficient way of doing it, so please do let me know, and I will get back to you with uh, changes. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and... Uh, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.